Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe. <laughs> okay, I think... I think my internet is back. Ah, that's so frustrating. My internet completely died. <sighs> Alright. But, we're back. So... After looking at where my internet died before, I actually didn't even notice it died for like a full, maybe even seven minutes, which that's kind of embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> but basically, uh, where we left off, if I remember correctly, is I drew, uh, not that, this, which turned into an oscillator which I was going to record using the recording function of this program and scrub through to find the sort of evolutionary origin of the oscillator. So what I was going to do was uh, start here, boom, then click record, have it play, for a little bit, which I had it going faster last time, but this is fine. Okay, that's enough. Boom, 75 frames, perfect. So basically we start oops, right here, and we see that it turns into this sort of double pyramid. And then that turns into this lump of five cells right here as well as these two off to the sides. And so this is the first cell that is uh, identical within the, um, within the oscillation. We see uh, that this, it comes up right here, boom. Uh, of course, this is flipped, this is mirrored, but uh, it also reappears on this side as well. And uh, so we see that this double triangle also reappears, but slightly different. It has these two cells right here. Now these don't interact with anything, making this frame and this frame effectively the same uh, inside of the pattern of oscillation. So this is really where it begins. This, this arrow, just happens to create that pattern, which is a, a part of the oscillation. And so this pattern is what comes right before the double triangle, which makes uh, the pattern which comes before the double triangle here effectively the same as well. And it's this, and this looks completely different, which, I mean... Like, you look at it and you're like, how could this possibly be the same as that little arrow? And so, if we look at the cells here, uh, we can see that these two are going to stay alive, I think. No, they're... Yeah, I think they are. If we go... Yeah, they stay alive because they have three neighbors each. And then these two are going to die because they only have two neighbors, but this cell right here will come to life because it has two neighbors. This one will come to life because it has two neighbors and this one and this one will come to life because they also have two neighbors. Uh, this one isn't going to come to life because it has three neighbors right there. But um, we can see that that creates the double pyramid and then these, these bits over here just create the little cell dots out here that don't interact with anything, making them pretty much null. Uh, but it's just really interesting that this is effectively the same within the oscillation pattern as uh, t this. It's really, really interesting stuff. But um, uh, after... After I did all of that, I wanted to create a glider within Hex Life, this hexagonal version of life. So if you missed uh, before, um, 
a where is it a glider uh in the original game of life is something like this where uh if you just let it play it just moves uh it just repeats it oscillates but the oscillation causes movement uh, and if we just let that play, it'll just keep on going into infinity until it hits something. Oh, accidentally. If we just create that. I don't know where those went. What? I think they died. Oh, well. Anyway, so... Uh, I wanted to create a glider similar to this one in Hex Life. Now, there are other gliders. I think they're called different things. Like this one, I think, is called a ship. But it's also a glider in the sense that it oscillates and creates movement. Where it moves over to the side. Um, but I wanted to do that. In hex life and i have absolutely no idea how to go about doing that like i tried creating something that looks visually similar to the glider in normal life but that didn't that didn't work at all uh so i just want to try and figure out if there's a way i can create a glider in hex life uh I'm honestly just kind of playing around and doing whatever in hopes that I end up creating a glider. But let's see. So if we look at an oscillator, for example, let's just look at, I don't know, this one. Uh, so I created this oscillator by accident earlier. It just goes back and forth like that. Is there a way that I can modify this into becoming a glider so i think it turns into that no it doesn't i messed it up <laughs> so it goes like that and so its next step is that one so what if we just put that dot there that does nothing doop 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 all right well if there was a way we could turn this into a glider I legitimately have no idea. I'm just kind of messing around, hoping that I end up creating something interesting. That resulted in a pentagon for a second. That was really interesting. Hold on. I think it was that? No. Dang it. Uh, oh well. <sighs> I have no idea. I have no idea how to go about creating a glider. You know what? Maybe I should just literally leave it to random chance. I mean, it could work. Cause uh, like if we go into normal life, uh, t -t 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 life and fill it randomly and press play I guarantee it's going to create a glider at some point in fact I saw one down here just a moment ago but it was only there for a couple of a couple of uh, stages frames I don't know what they're called I forget <laughs> See? Boom. Right there. Oh, oh, created a bunch of them, actually. I just accidentally pressed the wrong buttons, and so they ended up zooming off into infinity over here. But, boom, created a bunch of them. See, m maybe it's just because these gliders are really, really simple that it's easy for a random chance to create them in uh, normal life, but... I think there's a chance that if I leave it to random chance in Hex Life, I might also end up 
with some gliders. So let's see. I have a nice big space right there. It didn't result in any gliders. Now it did result in this really strange looking oscillator over here. That thing is weird looking. And these really pretty uh, like snowflake oscillators. Ooh, and this little wiggling worm oscillator. <laughs> uh, but it didn't result in any gliders. That is so, like, is it just, are gliders just not a thing in this rule set? Like, is it just impossible to create gliders? Let's see, let's, let's fill it with random stuff again and have it play out. Again, no gliders, except this time we have this really, it's really interesting three, like, pen, or not, uh, tri, uh, uh, triangle, <laughs> triagonal, <laughs> this really nice triangle oscillator, which looks kind of like the, um, what's it called, the biohazard uh, icon at one point. That's really interesting. So I guess just in this universe... Oh yeah, uh, sets of... Uh, in... A, a universe is like the grid, the playing field that you're on. But uh, with this rule set, it seems that there's just no gliders. And that's so interesting. Let's see if I can create a... Um, if I can create a hexagonal rule set that gives me gliders so here boom so this is the rule set code that uh i made to create this rule set basically so how it works is this is the name of the rule set it's just called hex life uh this says that it's defined by a table of rules uh this is how many states there are so there are two there's alive and dead but you can have some with multiple with more states than that, like three or four, three or four. Uh, this defines the type of neighborhood. Uh, so, in a cellular automata game similar to Life, so a lifelike game. Uh, if we look up here, we've got life, lifelike, yeah. But um, in a lifelike game, generally, or even not in lifelike ones, generally there's a neighborhood. And that neighborhood is... Oh, I closed it. <laughs> so that neighborhood defines what cells nearby a cell interact with it. So a hexagonal neighborhood, let's see if I can... Let's, let's just use a sprite. For this because this will this will make it nice and simple to show so if we look at this let's say that this is our universe this simple 12 by 12 universe right here so this cell right here uh in the game of life it uses i think what's called a von neumann neighborhood which means that it's the four surrounding it as well as its four corners Uh, t -t 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 let me just... Um, but there's also the uh, other one, which is just the four sides. There's the four sides plus one. Uh, and then the hexagonal neighborhood is a little bit different. Uh, since we're still using a grid, though, I can still show it here. So a hexagonal neighborhood is i think it looks like this where it's got north south east west and then northeast and southwest or maybe the other way around i don't i get east and west mixed up all the time but uh there's that 
And then I'm sure there's probably another, oh, whoops, another Von Neumann-like neighborhood where it's like the plus one except with the corners, or maybe with the corners it looks something like this. But basically the neighborhood is just what cells have an effect on it. So if we look at this, boom, boom, let's draw a glider right here. So this cell right here, the red one, its neighborhood is all the cells surrounding it. So it is currently influenced by every single other cell in this pattern. And so since it has one, two, three, four neighbors, it survives into the next round. Uh, because a cell survives if it has three or four neighbors in life. Uh, this one only has one neighbor, so it dies. Uh, here. So this one survives. This one... This one has one, two, three, so it survives. This one has two, which means it dies. This one has one, two, which means it dies. This one only has one, which means it dies. This cell has two neighbors, so it doesn't come to life. This one has three neighbors, so it comes to life. This one has one, two, three, four neighbors, so it doesn't come to life. Uh, t -t 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 this one right here does come to life. I think I'm doing this wrong, but <laughs> I think <laughs> I think the idea has been made. The point has been made. And then the symmetries right here are the symmetries of each of the rules defined right here. So these rules, this isn't, uh, this is, I think, uh, I'd have to, I'd have to look. Let's see if I go to help. Uh, boom. So contents is it algorithms it is okay so yeah it is the von neumann neighborhood i knew it all right so with the hexagonal neighborhood it's north east southeast south west northwest uh i think that's the order for that one but yeah, if we look at uh, the code that I had, oh, I closed it anyway, here. So we can see, I think it's just north, east, south, east, south, west, northwest. Uh, we can see here if it is at state zero, which is dead, then it uh, and it has two neighbors, uh, which right here it says if it's north and east, then it will turn to live. But since the symmetries say to permute, it allows for the live cells to be anywhere instead of just in the north or the east. Um, but if I were to change it to a different kind of symmetry, I don't know, I forget what rules there are for the symmetries, but uh, it might make it so that it could be north and east or south and west or something similar to that. So let's change this. Uh, let's call this hex life two. And then let's make it so that cells will also come to life if they have three neighbors. So this one will be called hex life two. Boom. And then if we go back to Golly, close that. We'll see down here in our rules. We, I might have to refresh it somehow. I'm not really sure how I would do that. Oh wait, I just realized I didn't actually check where it saved. Okay, yeah, it, it did save it into, um... All right, so got hex life maybe if i close and open the rules there it is hex life 2 so now we should see that uh if 
something has three neighbors, like this cell right here, it'll come to life in the next step. Boom. And so now we've got a nice oscillator like that. Uh, so let's see, what happens if we do that pattern from before, the arrow? Oh, that grows without bound. Huh. I did not expect that. <laughs> That's so interesting. Alright, so it looks like it's much easier to, um... It's much easier to create... Like, since with that added rule, it seems to make it so that things grow without bound quite a lot easier. But we're not here to ask if things can grow without bound. We're here to see if we can make a glider. Instead, we ended up making this oscillator. Man, just want to make a glider. <laughs> Is it that hard? Is it that much to ask for? Oh, and here we've got another one that grows without bounds. Of course, those things might not actually grow without bounds. They could eventually end at step 4 billion or something. But I don't care to stick around to find out. <laughs> that one's another oscillator. Nice four-step oscillator. What if we... I don't know, just draw something random. It's probably going to end up growing without bounds. Yeah. Alright, so maybe to help limit growth without bounds, we can make it so that things also die if they have three neighbors or something. I don't know. Let's 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 try it out. Boom. Save Hex Life 2. Go back over here. Let's just close and reopen the rules. Boop, boop. Uh, is there a way for me to just easily deselect everything? Remove selection is control K. What a weird, that's so strange. Usually it's like control D. All right. So now if we do this arrow, it doesn't grow without bounds. Instead, it's an oscillator now. Oh, nice. It's a three-step oscillator. It looks like one, two, three. And, well, it's four-step technically, but one of them is like a reverse of... It's very similar. That's interesting. Anyway, glider time. Go. Oh. Oh, is this one going to grow without bounds as well? Oh, that's really strange. So, with the other growth without bounds ones before they grew in a hexagonal shape and this one didn't start hexagonal but it looks like it's very very slowly becoming more and more hexagonal if we make that go extra super fast a seizure warning i guess <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Is there a way for me to make this even, even faster? Oh, okay. So my computer is having trouble handling that fast. So, but I get the feeling that if I let it go even further, it would probably end up a hexagon because that was, that was getting pretty close there. So, let's see. That also grows without bounds. Interesting. Oh. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> That's pretty cool. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Anyway. Let's go ahead and select everything and delete. Alright. Well, so far this hasn't been a great success. <laughs> Maybe let's make it so that they only can be birthed from sets of three. Let's let's try that one out, huh? See see how that goes. 
Interesting. That doesn't seem to be doing much. Oh, it's because I have it going mega fast. Okay, so... So it seems like this isn't really resulting in much at all. I mean, we've still got that oscillator, but it doesn't really seem to be doing much. Seems like most things die out. Hmm. All right, what if we try it so that it births from three or from one? Let's, let's see what happens there. Oh, did I save that? Okay, I did. Boop, boop. If I do that, is this going to grow without bounds? I think it might grow without bounds. Let's find out. Yep. Yep, pretty sure that's growing without bounds. <laughs> What if it only births from one? <laughs> I'm just trying out a whole bunch of random stuff now just to see what, what happens. Oh, if it only births from one, it seems to very quickly grow without bounds. Let's see. If we go like that. <gasps> Whoa! That's a really interesting... Oh, that looks so cool! Oh my, okay, jeez. <laughs> That's so interesting. So if we scroll all the way back in, just from that single cell, it just infinitely grows. That is so interesting. Anyway, so that's just been messing around with hex life, but there are a whole bunch of other cellular automatas in here. Uh, one of them uh, that I find really uh, interesting is Wire World. So Wire World's whole thing, if I remember correctly, is that this, the orange is like copper wire and then blue Blue, yes, is a um, an electrical current. And then white is just behind it, so that way blue only moves forward in an electrical current. So with this, you can literally simulate um, just wiring uh, a circuit board. So let's see, an AND gate at do... It doesn't move diagonally. I don't remember. Okay, it does. So I think how this works is if two signals collide, they cancel out. No, they join to one. But if I think... Yeah, okay, I was right. So... A signal can only move onto an orange space instead of a white one. So if we make that move, boom, you'll see it'll try to move there, but it can't because that's a white space, so it ends up fizzling out. All right, so that right there is something. <laughs> And so you can see with this one, this has four different states. Uh, this has four different, uh, four different cell states. Uh, whereas life and hex life only had two. And so here we can say, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just kind of 
doing nothing now. <laughs> so, I don't know. Let's try to let's try to create. Um, let's make an AND gate. Why not? So an AND gate will only give an output if both inputs, uh, if it has two inputs or two. Or... Wait, no. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of an NAND gate. I think. Shoot. Let me remember circuitry gates for a moment. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, okay, so an AND gate will only work if it has inputs from both. It won't work if it has inputs from only one or only the other. So, let's see. We're going to want each line to cancel itself out at some point. So, I don't know. Let's let's see what happens if I let this run. It just does that. Okay, so we're going to want it to cancel itself out. So what if we do this? Just playing around with it at this point. Yeah, not really sure how I'd go about creating this. So I know that there are actually some patterns up here for wire world here. So this is an AND gate apparently. So I just cheated. I didn't end up making it myself, but <laughs> here it is. So let's see, let's reset that. No, still going too fast. That is still too fast, the heck? Okay, so we see here, interesting, okay, so if we just draw this, it looks like it's a knot gate which just reverses the well it's not actually a knot gate because this doesn't generate an output but so we'll see this go down and does it just yeah it just turns it off interesting so but there is apparently a knot gate or, no, I did not mean to save that. So what does the knot gate look like? It looks like this. All right, let's reset that. <laughs> so, boom. So we see here, cancels out like that. And then when it doesn't have an input, it generates that a pulse okay that's so smart that's so cool and then this is an or gate which we see it allows an input no matter if one or the other and then there's the zor gate which looks like this and so a zor gate only allows it if it's one or the other, but not both. So I keep forgetting to slow it down. <laughs> so we can see those cancel each other out, but those just keep on going. Very nice. A memory cell. Oh. Wait, so what would the memory cell be used for? Okay. So a memory cell seems to remember 
it's it's like a gate it's a flip-flop gate where when it gets an input it turns on and uh when it gets another input it turns back off oh what's this This seems to be something called Nick Gardner. Honestly, not really sure what that was. <laughs> Compact expanded an inverter. Interesting. Whoa, what's this? Oh, no way. Oh, my God. This is a this is a digit display that displays primes, it looks like. So right now it's at three. Does it ever change or do I have to do some sort of input? Not entirely sure if I just have to wait or give an input. Okay, so let's see. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So whatever this is, that does something. I am not entirely sure what I, what to do with this, but so yeah, it does start out at three. Splits it, sending it up and down. But that doesn't seem to go anywhere. What? I am so confused. <laughs> Whatever this is, I feel like it could be really cool, but. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Langton's aunt. So Langton's aunt is an a um another cellular automata. Uh let's see, so let's just go over here to Langton's aunt. Boom, deselect. So It'll, you'll see that here, we'll just want to put the ant. Doop, there he is. Happy little ant. So the ant has one coat, uh, one or two rules. Um, on a white space, turn and move to the right and change to a black space. And on a black space, turn and move to the left and change to a white space. So this is going to move down here and change that to black. And then it's going to move over there and then up. And so now that it's on a black space, this is going to, uh, this is going to move that way and change this to a white. Boop, like that. Doop, 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 doop. And so if you let it go forever, it just, goes like that and eventually it creates what's called a highway which is this right here and so you can see it 
just repeats and goes on forever. And so this right here, whoops, uh, Langton's aunt, no. This seems to be Langton's aunt, except inside of Wire World. What? <laughs> that is so wild. It's literally Langton's aunt inside of Wire World. So is it eventually going to create the highway? It should. If I scroll out too far, it doesn't show me anything, which is really frustrating. Did it create a highway? I think it did, right there. Boom. That is so interesting. You can create one cellular automata within another cellular automata. <sighs> What's termites? This looks like it could be something similar to Langton's ant, maybe? Except it seems to have a much more complicated set of states. Oh? Yeah, it is. Okay. So, it's like Langton's ant, except the ant itself has a few different states. Interesting. Extinction. What's this? Oh? Was, was that it? Not really sure what that... Oh, it's a Fibonacci spiral. Very nice. Go faster. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, that's so cool. It just creates a Fibonacci sp spiral. Nice. All right, so this one is called Highways, so I assume it's just going to create highways. Like in, um... Like with the the ant. Maybe. Oh, oh no, it's called Highway 2074575. Not entirely sure what that means. I wish I could just like ascertain the history of each one of these from from the name, basically. Oh, okay, so it just creates a highway. Yeah, except it's a randomized highway. Or, not randomized, but it's a very wiggly highway. Oh? Is this Langton's ant within... Oh, no, this is Cardioid, uh, which is similar to Langton's ant, but... Um, it basically just creates a heart shape, if I remember correctly. Oh, jeez. Looks more like a brain. But, yeah, cardioid, you can see, because it's got the sort of rounded and the indent right there. That's so interesting. And it's all just this one little ant running around, making changes. Or one little termite, I guess. Perfectionist. Oh? Is it just supposed to... I I'm not really sure why it's called Perfectionist. It's just another highway. Huh. Triangular Ant. Ooh. Oh, that's cool.
It looks like it's just an oscillator, though. Oh, it's called period 92. So this one's just triangular Langdon's ant. Oh, that's so interesting. I wonder if it creates a highway similar to, um, similar to Langdon's ant. Let's see, we speed it up. Oh, it seems to be creating this sort of spaceship-like shape, like almost like a Star Destroyer. Oh, oh, and then it turned into the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> All right, so it seems to be just creating an ever embiggening shape. It's like a turtle. <laughs> Here's its shell and its head and its little arms, or more like wings, I guess. So I'm guessing that the that the head and the arms, as I called them, I'm guessing that they just grow into infinity. It doesn't look like this creates a highway. Instead, it seems to create multiple highways in five different directions. So here we can see the ant doing his thing over here. Zooming about. Look at him go. That's so interesting. It doesn't ever seem to be caught in a loop. Unless you call creating this ever embiggening shape a loop. That's so interesting. I never would have thought that. So this one's called Worm Trails. So I guess we'll find out what happens here. Hmm. I think I know where this is going. Where basically, it's like these trails through green that look like they could be like worm trails through dirt, or like a uh, or like a an ant's nest, similar to that. That's really interesting. It got caught in a loop. So, worm trails ends with this shape, and then a little loop right there. Interesting. <sighs> oh, it's this. So this is something called Super. Is that a, uh, I don't know what rule set this is. Oh, it's Life Super. Oh yeah, uh, delete. So another, uh, another lifelike is Life on the Edge, which has four different states. Um, t -t 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 and so each of the different states covers uh, one or the other or both of these edges. So I think I still have it a bit too fast. <laughs> but let's just draw that, see what happens. I'm not really sure what the rule set for this is. But it seems to create similar things to life. Like, I imagine that there'd be oscillators eventually. Oh, we have a glider. All right, so this, this weird looking shape right here, 
That's our glider. So what are the rules here that allow this to happen? Why is this? Let's see, so next it's gonna be that one? Yeah. So what exactly is happening? So this one flips between yellow and red, and this one flips between yellow and orange. What are the rules for this? Uh, let's see, so let me look up. Uh, let's see. Life on the edge game. Life on the edge is a video game designed to help first year students in biology 101, introduction to cell biology, actively engage with the key concepts of the course. Dr. Ross Shaw, an assistant uh, professor in biological sciences, had dreamed of creating a biology-themed video game for over a dec decade. Is this the same game that this is? Let's, let's see. I'm not really sure. It doesn't look like it. <laughs> uh... Life on the Edge official game trailer. So this is what Life on the Edge is. It's a tower defense game to play, experiment, and learn. Oh, so it's a tower defense game where you play as a cell? Alright. Yeah, it's it's cell biology. That's really interesting. I kind of want this game now. Is it available? Like, it's coming fall 2021. Huh. That's so interesting. And I, I never would have even seen it. Right, well, um... So, what I want to do right now is I want to find the rules for life on the edge. Oh! Hey, dinner tonight is just whatever you find. Cool. Short interruption there. <laughs> anyway, so... It has four states on, let's see. So if we search up, let, let's pull this over here. So if we search up on ways, game of life. Oh, that's, oh, that's cute. Oh, they actually put Conway's game of life on Google when you search it. Oh, that's really cute. Anyway, Conway's game of life, boom, cellular automaton. So, are there similar... Undecidability, self-replication... On a trefoil knot. Ooh, that's interesting. That's cool. Anyway. Uh, variations. Here we've got... Okay, so... There's high life. Which is described by the ability to so this this right here is a cellular automaton uh notation for uh coming to life and dying so b stands for birth so a cell will turn from dead to live if it has three neighbors or six neighbors and then it will survive if it has two neighbors or three neighbors All right, let's see, additional lifelike cellular automata exist. These most produces universes that are either too chaotic or too desolate to be of interest, but a large subset do display interesting behavior. Further generalization produces isotropic rule space. 
uh, Game of Life being one of them. These rules are similar to Escort of Red. Some variations modify the geometry of the universe as well as the rule. The above variations can be thought of as two-dimensional square because they have the world is two-dimensional and laid out in a square grid. One-dimensional square variations, known as elementary cellular automata, and three-dimensional variations have been developed, as well as two-dimensional hexagonal and triagonal or triangular variations. A variant using aperiodic tiling grids has also been made. Really? I want to see the aperiodic tiling grid. Uh, Conway's rules may also be generalized such that instead of two states live and dead, there are three or more. State transitions are then determined by either weighing a system or a table specifying separate transition rules for each state. Example, Merrick's uh, celebration multicolor rules table and weighted life rule families include simple rules equivalent to the game of life. What is Merrick's celebration? Often shortened to M cell. It's a tool for simulating cellular automata, including Conway's Game of Life. Oh, so it's a similar. Ah, uh, I see. It's a um, it's a similar program to Golly, the one that I'm using right now. All right. Patterns relating to fractals and fractal systems may also be observed in certain lifelike variations. For example, the automaton birth one, survive one, two, uh, generates four very close approximations to Sierpinski triangle when applied to a single live cell. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they actually have that one um, in this. So here, let's delete that. Uh, uh, is it in lifelike? Uh, don't remember. Oh, what's this? So this is a bounded universe. You can see it has walls, or maybe it looks like those might actually be loops. Yeah. So this is on a torus, it looks like. Yeah, torus. So if we speed this up, what is this gonna result in? Uh, results in that. Not exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> uh, table generators, tree generators. Is it Perrier? No. Uh, hold on. Delete. No, I saw it just a little bit ago. Uh, non-totalistic, no. Other rules... Oh, this generates a dragon curve. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's so cool! It literally just generates a dragon curve. Oh, that is really, really cool. Anyway. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Ed rep, so I'm guessing this is a picture of some guy named Ed, and it's a replicator, which means that it eventually creates more Eds? I 
think it does. Hold on. Uh, somewhere around here. It's going to turn into more pictures of Ed, I think. Yeah, it is. It's an Ed replicator. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> right. Golly ants. Oh, it's multiple ants. Okay. I'm just wanting the, uh, I just want the, I just want the one dimensional thing that I saw on there. I'm so upset. Interesting. Not what I was looking for, though. Uh, High Life Replicator, Ice 9. Whatever. Oh, it's Ice 9. <laughs> that's funny. That's that's funny. Uh, whatever that is. Persian rugs? Oh, it just creates a Persian rug. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, none of these are what I'm looking for, though, which is very, very annoying. What is this? Oh, wow. Seizure warning there. What? Someone made a sand physics simulator using cellular automata? That is so interesting. What? That is so interesting. I never, ever would have thought. I never would have thought. That's so weird. <laughs> oh, I get it now. So this sand test. It's supposed to show them falling over. Oh, this is a gas simulator? Oh, I don't like how it flashes like that, but it simulates gas? This is the Tripatron. Oh, yeah, geez. Mega seizure warning there. Serpinski Builder? It builds a Serpinski Triangle, doesn't it? Okay, hold on. Let's speed this up. I want to see this. <gasps> It does! Oh, it builds... Oh, that's so interesting. It builds a double Serpinski. Interesting. Anyway. Honestly, kind of upset that I haven't found what I'm looking for, but oh well. It'll come up eventually. Hopefully. <laughs> I'm like really upset that I haven't found them because I found them on here earlier.
Perhaps it isn't scripts? I don't know. I am so confused because I found this earlier. I keep getting sidetracked. <laughs> anyway. Right. Except there are two on states. Immigration. Uh, two expressed with two different colors. When a new cell is born, it takes on a state that the majority of the three cells that gave birth. This feature can be used to examine in interactions between spaceships. Spaceships. A finite pattern. Oh, I see. It's called a spaceship if it reappears after a certain number of generations in the same orientation but a different position. The smallest number of generation, let's see, the smallest such number of generations is called the period of a spaceship. Interesting. Look at those spaceships go. Anyway, interactions between spaceships and other objects within the game. A similar variation called quad life involves four different on states when a cell is Born from three different neighbors, it takes the fourth value. Otherwise, like immigration, it takes the majority value. Exception for the variation amongst, except for the variation among cells, both of these variations act identically to the game of life. I want to recreate that. I want to recreate that within this. Let's do it. All right. So let's grab this. Go over here. Uh, I think. Shoot. I forgot. Uh, over here. Uh, let's see. So, rule. Let's see. Golly. Okay. Okay, so a rule fire file. T -t 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 so, okay, so we want it to be more, I think. Okay, let's see. I am not entirely sure. Not entirely sure. Okay. Okay, so we want it to be Von Neumann. Here we go. And... Symmetry is permute. Okay, so we're going to want it to have four different on states, which is five states total. Right? Let's see. Quad life. Four different on states. Yep. So, let's see. Go over here. So, let's just go ahead and get rid of this. So, if a dead cell, which is state zero, 
let's see. So in Game of Life, it's born from three cells. So if it has three one neighbors, then it will be born a one. If it has, oh wow, this is gonna take a long time. I just realized. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of different ways to. Is there a way that I could speed this up potentially? Eh, oh well. You know what? Instead of doing quad life, let's do immigration. So that way it's a little, a little easier on me, which that is three states. So then if it has two of those, it is also born a one. However, if it has two twos, then it is born a two. And if it has three twos, then it is also born a two. Yeah, I think that's all of the different... Yeah, that covers it. Okay, and then after that... We have got for state one. Let's see. Oh, we have to specify when they die, which is a bit. Whew. <laughs> I might have bitten off more than I can chew. Uh. Okay. So. They die if they have anything other than two or three. So if it has just one neighbor, then it dies, which is represented with both of those. If it, if it has two neighbors, then it lives. I'm not entirely sure how to specify that. I guess just don't put in rules for... Okay, yeah. Uh, if it has three neighbors, it lives. If it has four neighbors, so let's see. Four neighbors would be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But it goes to zero. And then two, three, boom. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Riveting stream. Woman types numbers over and over, and it is absolutely mind boggling. <laughs> All right, and then two, 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 four, or zero, 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 zero. All right, so I think that's all the permutations for five or for four. On to five. One, two, three, four, five, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Or wait, shoot, those commas aren't supposed to be there. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Boom. Alright, that's all the variations. Four uh five for cell one. Man, this is gonna take a second. <laughs> okay. Actually, I think I know how I can make this go a little faster. So let's take all of the five variations, go here. 
change this. Uh, let's see, copy this, boop, right there, whoops. And then that has one, and the rest of these are two. Boom, that's all the six variations. All right, and then for seven, Boom, and then we want to copy that one, paste right there, that has one, and then the rest of these are two. And then finally, for eight cells, Yeah, okay, sorry, I just had like a... I just had a moment. <laughs> okay. Uh... Boom. Alright, so that's all of the variations for cell 1. Now, we just take this, copy and paste, and then change it so that way all of these are 2. I think... I think that's it. Let's see. So this is immigration. Immigration. Save. All right. Let's go back over to here. Check out our rules. Immigration. Boom. Rule one or number one and number two. So if whoops. Uh, so if we just do that. That did not look correct. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> yeah, so what that happened was that. But if we do that in life, what happens is that. So clearly I messed it up. <laughs> Dang it. What did I do wrong? I must have done something wrong. Okay, so let's look at this. <laughs> I think... I have no idea what I did wrong. Because there should be... Let's see, if we look at this... Von... The Von Neumann neighborhood is all eight of them, and the Moore neighborhood is four, I think. Shoot, I don't remember. <laughs> Crap. Well, okay. Let's just search Von Neumann neighborhood. Boop. Okay, Von neighbor. Von Newman neighborhood. Oh no. The Moore neighborhood is what I was thinking of. Whoops. Moore neighborhood. Boop. Alright, try this again. <laughs> so, still eat that. Go over to immigration. Do. Alright, good. Uh, not good. Psych. Uh,. Shoot. I forgot to add in that it should die if it has zero neighbors. So, yeah, whoops. That's a little bit of an oopsie. So, boom. <clears throat> and then scroll down to here. And, boom. Or, shoot. Boom. I'm not going to pay for Sublime right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> Epic livestream content, I pay for Sublime. It's still not working! Oh, I think I have to... right. There we go. <laughs> Alright, so that looks about correct. So now, let's say, let's just take this glider here. And let's change that to be 
or let's change those two to be yellow. <gasps> what? No way. Oh, that's so interesting. One half just stays yellow and the other half stays red. I would not have guessed that. All right. What if we, uh, what if we create the other spaceship, this thing, or that's pointed the wrong way. I don't want it to be pointed that way. I think this is the correct shape. Boop, boop. Oh, it just turns red. So let's lower the speed. So we can see it's about half and half, but there's more yellow than red right now. And then now these are all red, but the outer edges turn yellow, which results in them having even less input as time goes on, resulting in it being entirely red. All right, so let's go back to here. Let's change it so that that one is yellow. The same result. All right, how about if we, um, Interesting. This is some good music. All right, let's uh, let's take this and let's randomly fill. Let's see what happens. It's still really slow. <laughs> We end up with localized regions of red and yellow. And we've got a bunch of gliders coming off, but they all seem to be single colored. <gasps> oh, except for that one. Look at you. Look at you. Being multicolored, different from the rest. That's cool. Interesting. So there's still some some activity going on, but mostly everything has settled down. All right, getting closer. All right, and finally, we have reached a state of equilibrium where nothing is going to change. Interesting. That's really cool, honestly. Like... Ah, that's so cool. That just makes me want to see quad life now, though. Ah! Okay. Maybe, I think... Ah, no. No. <laughs> Uh, am I gonna do it? Am I gonna try to make quad life? If I do, this is going to be a very long stream. <laughs> oh, I really want to. I want to see what quad life looks like. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try and make it as quick as I possibly can. I've changed that to quad life. So let's quickly save this as quad life. So that way. Okay, there we go. So quad life. It's got five states, more neighborhoods, permutations. Okay. So this is going to be a little bit different. Let's see. So here we've got one one or shit <laughs> messed it up one one 
three, zero, 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 zero. There's one. And then one, one, four, zero, zero, zero. Equals one, or one. <laughs> okay. Then we can just copy this and change the ones to twos. Two, 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 one, two, 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 two. And then boom, it's the twos done. And then we do the threes. Three, three, three. You know what? It would be faster if I just uh, boom, 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 boom. I messed it up. God frickin' darn it. <laughs> doop, 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 doop. Change those to threes. And then this three right here becomes a one. Finally, we have the fours. Which doop doop doop. One one. One one. One. And all of these, which become fours. And then this four becomes a one. And then finally, we have three more, which would be one, two, three becomes four. And then two, three, four becomes one. Three, four, one becomes two. And Four, one, two, becomes three. All right. Let's just rearrange that so it's a little easier to tell what's going on. Okay. Boom. And now comes the harder part. <laughs> which is the actual live cells interactions. Whew. To the one person watching this right now, I mean, what are you doing? I mean, I love you, thank you for watching, but I really hope that this is interesting to you. Either that, or it's just good background noise, which I'm sure it's pretty decent background noise. Alright, so I just realized my pop filter is all wacky. There we go. Alright, so for cell one, Basically, we're just going to have to copy those two, change that to three and four. And for this one, oh jeez. <laughs> okay. So let's see. We're going to one and one 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 three zero 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 goes to zero. And then one, 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 four, zero, 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 zero. I need a way to tell it to permutate, permute every of every one of the live cells. Is that something you can do? Let me take a look at the the stuff over here. Table. Oh! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> there is a way! He <laughs> could have made this so much easier! Uh. Uh. Okay, well. <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> okay, let's. Let's try this again, huh? <laughs> All right, so up here, before any of this, we're going to say var a 
equals, and then it's going to equal one and two. And then we're just gonna get a bunch of these going on. Basically all of the different combinations. So three, four, then two, three, well, it's two, three, two, four, and then three, four. I think that's all of them. So that's one and two, one and three, one and four, two and three, two and four, three and four. Yep, that's all of them. Okay. So, and then after that, we're going to want to change. Also have the three numbered variations. Okay, yeah. Okay, I got this right. I just had to make sure that I... Okay. So this is going to be variable B, C, D, E, F, G, H. I, which is going to be 1, 3, and 4. J, which is two, three, four. I think that's all of them. Yeah. <clears throat> so I can shorten this to be, uh, and then also we can have var k, which is all four of them. One, two, whoops, I just realized. One, two, three, four. So this is k, and I can get rid of all of those three. This is also k, get rid of those three. Oh man. Look at me, learning an entirely new programming language, sort of. It's a very strange language that only has one very specific use, and that's creating cellular automata. Okay. So, I think that's everything done for birthing. So, let's see. Birthing. And then uh, here we have dying. So for this, we have variables, Let's see, or combinatory. Variables. Okay. So for dying, one will die if every single one of its neighbors is dead. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It will also die. Or actually, these can be K because it applies to all of them. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, I have so much power now. <laughs> Actually, the only variable we need is k, now that I think about it. So, let's just rename that a for the sake of fun. So, find 
k replace with a in current file boop done boom ah that is ah that is stellar that makes this so much easier okay and then it also dies if it has four neighbors and if it has five neighbors And if it has six neighbors. And if it has seven neighbors. And if it has eight neighbors. <laughs> Boom. Uh, that's... I think that's literally all of it. Ah. <laughs> All right, time to test it out, see if it worked. Let's look at our rules. We should have quad life somewhere around here. Boom. All right. So if I just do a scribble of red, it should... Nice. It's just the game of life. Perfect. But let's go ahead and do that. Select a nice squarish area. Have it randomly fill. And deselect. Oh. Well, uh, that's not exactly right. <laughs> I mean, it looks really interesting, but... Uh... Oh, I think I know what's going on. Why it's uh, messing up like this. I think it's doing that because with this, it considers each A to be the same so if a is one for this then all of the other a's are also automatically one which is okay i can i can just i think right i don't i don't know uh Shoot, that actually might really mess things up. Mm. Okay, just, just for the sake of testing, let's try this out. See if that does does anything better. Then let's just randomly fill. Yeah, still still not quite. It's really interesting though. Like they're like warring factions of Con Conway's game of life. Like, you can see that each color within its own thing is just Conway's game of life. But... They, like, are fighting for territory, and it's, like, really interesting. I mean, it's not exactly fighting for territory, they just kind of expand when they meet each other. So it's more like a... It's more like a helping each other expand infinitely. But, um, yeah, still not, still not really working how I was hoping, which, ugh, massive bummer, dude. All right. That is, that is a really, that's a large bummer. As I said, massive bummer. Let's see, so 
If we open up immigration... Man, that is... That is such a massive bummer. <laughs> I think I know how I can get around it, though. And that's by... So, in, in this example over here, in this other window I have open, uh, these variables are all set to the same thing, which confused me at first, but now I think I know why. It's so that each variable can independently represent any like either or of each thing so let's see okay so if we go over here and ah oh, shoot i messed it all up <laughs> brick all right, so let's go over here, replace K with A, just like we did before. And close that. So I think we can just do that eight times. That's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J? Yeah, I think J is the eighth letter. <laughs> I can count. Let's see, so one, two, three, four. No, J is the tenth letter. H is the eighth letter. Yeah, okay. So if we have it like that, oh wait, we're going to want nine, actually. So bring back I. Okay. So if all of its neighbors are dead, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then it dies as well. If one of its neighbors are alive, then it dies. If, let's see, four of its neighbors are alive, so that'd be B, C, D, E, then it dies. If five, then it dies, so that's B, C, D, E, F. Six. E, F, G. Uh, and so on and so forth. <laughs> Just continue adding on to this. B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Boom. Okay, I think that should work. Let's see, so let's clear that. Refresh. Go with that. Control. And fill randomly. Select. And would you look at that? It worked! Oh my god. I actually did it. Oh. That is so cool. Ah. Oh. I love that feeling of accomplishment you get when you, like, actually create something and it's, like, successfully, like, you successfully created something really cool. That, that makes me feel so good. Alright, so I want to, I want to quickly change the, uh, I want to change the coloring of each of the different cell types really quick. Let's see. Let's 
Okay. So... It's using RGB, so let's just quickly pull up an RGB color picker. Alright, er, let's just... Color... Boop. So, for the first one, we'll just do red. So, if we go back over here, I don't even... So that's at... Is it? Yeah. At colors... Zero is going to be dark gray. That's just dead cell. Uh, any text after the after the four numbers right there is ignored, which is really nice. Good for comments. Uh, cell one will be red, so that's two five five zero zero. State 2 is going to be, uh, I don't know, let's, let's pick a color. Pick a color, any color. Uh, let's make cell 2 blue, this nice pretty blue, so that's 115 and 255. So 0, 115, 255. Zero, one, fifteen, two, five, five. Pretty blue. <laughs> Three is, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, keep getting sidetracked. Uh, <laughs> Three will be green. Let's make it like a like a yellow green. Sure, why not? 115.255. Oh, well, nice, nice. Uh, what's the word? Yeah, 115.255.0. What's the word? Um, t -t 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 I don't remember. Oh, uh, lime green. Four will be. I don't know. Let's make four like a like a, a red violet. One seventy zero two five five. One seventy zero two five five makes it herbal, and then state five. Wait, oh yeah, no, there is no state five. <laughs> I had like a brain fart for a second. I was like, state five. What color should stay five be? All right, there we go. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Oh, that's really cool. All right, all right. So let's go ahead and clear. And... Oh, I accidentally turned on the grid. Okay. So let's make a glider. And since there are four different color states, I can do something like this. Boop. Boop. It's, it just turns red. What? Okay, let's slow it down a bit. So we see green is immediately eliminated. Oh, and then it comes back for a second and then it's gone. So let's see. So one step forward, we see that green goes away and turns blue. I wonder why that is. Or green goes away 
and it's replaced with a red and that or it's replaced with the blue but yeah boom 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 and that turns green why does that turn green Oh, it's because the three cells that are bringing it to life, those three are three different colors, so it turns green. That is so cool. Ah, so cool. Okay, I want to I want to do another thing. Whoops. I want to do another thing where no, <laughs> where I just create a random Oop. All right, and let's see what happens. Oh, wow, that is a very large rectangle. I did not intend that. Let's just go ahead and delete that. And I want to make it square. Like that. Boop. Okay. Look at it go. It really quickly separates into different sectioned areas of each color. Which is very interesting to me. We've got a whole bunch of different gliders going off, but like... They're all... Ugh, they're all monocolored, which makes them boring. <laughs> I love cellular automata so much. They're so interesting to just watch. Okay. So... I'm tempted to make like a super intense version of quad life with like a ton of different colors. <sighs> Let's make a uh, octa life. <laughs> Why not? Seems like a good use of my time. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Boom. Or wait, that's that's non-life. <laughs> non-life. <laughs> okay. So now, let's just make it. Uh, shoot. See, the problem arises where when a cell is born of three different partners, how does it decide what color the cell is going to become? Do... Is there a way for me to, like, randomize it? Or... Uh... Okay, let's see. Uh oh, did my internet die again? It better not have. I'm gonna be very upset if it died again. <laughs> Okay, no, my internet didn't die. Okay. song okay 
Okay, um... Okay, so... It's the output of a transition. Variables can now be used. Inside later variables, interesting. After a variable declaration. Is there... okay, so... Transitions consist of variables, lab variable labels, and cell states specifying the inputs and the outputs of each transition. Together, the set of transitions specifies the behavior of the cellular automata. So, transitions. Hmm, not really, uh, not really sure how I can have it, if I can have it choose a random here. Let's, um, let's test it out. So if we get rid of that, say this is... A, B, C, and then this will result in D. Sure. Let's save that as quad life 2. Save. Now, let's see. If we close and open the rules, quad life 2. Variable A, state value. Oh, whoops, I messed it up. Uh, right. Right here, let's just quickly slap that back on. Save, boom, go back over here, quad life two. No? Okay, I guess it doesn't like that either, so. How about that? Boom. No? What the heck? Oh, output, output must be state, single state variable, or bound variable. So what is a bound variable? Go over here and let's see where the same variable appears more than once in a transition it stands for the same state each line they are bound uh, the output of a transition can contain variables but only if those variables appear in the inputs ah disappointed Oh, wait, but that means I can simplify this even further. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so let's just quickly fix the, all the crap that I did here. Boop. 
Okay, that means that I can simplify this down to A, A, B, turn to A. And then I can get rid of all those. Boom! <laughs> okay, so I can actually just save that one as quad life. Yes, go back over here, open quad life. Then let's go ahead and <clears throat> select. Oh, wait, that's a very small area. Select that, randomize, boom, enter. Nice! <laughs> ah, that's, that's very good. That's very good. But it means that I can't really randomize, which is unfortunate. So... Let's, uh, close that, close that. Let's open up Quad Life 2. Quad Life 2. Or let's rename it Octa Life. Octa. So, maybe, let's say, I don't know. How is a way we can split these, split all eight of these into four different categories? We could say maybe like just group them by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So like groups of two. Sure, why not? Let's do that. <laughs> Makes it nice and easy. So let's set that to be nine states. And, uh, okay, so var j equals one or two, whoa, that was weird, one or two, <laughs> var k equals three or four, var l equals Five or six. Bar. Let's see. J K L M equals seven or eight. All right. Good. 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 Or let's see. And then these are grouping, whoops, group, grouping, grouping variables. Whoops. Okay. So that means for birthing, we can still have it, or wait, first we have to go up here and do Five, six, seven, eight. And then for birthing, we can still do what I did earlier with the uh, A, A, B equals A. A, B equals A. And then for the rest of them, we can do uh, that's J. K, whoops, J, K, L will equal, oh wait, shoot, but that still makes it unable to randomize. Uh, crap. Crap, crap. Uh, yeah, I still have the same problem as before. Which, oof. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess maybe we can just have it so that it will equal one, two, three, or four. Sure.
And then that's uh, K L L M two equals two. I think no. So the first one should actually be four. That one should be set to four. Then this one is one zero, and then L L M J is two. And M J K is three. Oop. And then I don't know. I guess that should technically work, but that makes it much more likely for one, two, three, for states one, two, three, and four to arise while five, six, seven, and eight are hindered. There's got to be a way. There's got to be a way I can make this work. Oh, I just realized my music stopped playing. There we go. <laughs> Uh, so I can delete quad life too, because now we have octa life, but still kind of, hmm, not really super happy that, hmm. Maybe, okay, maybe if I set that to be 1, 3, this to be 2, 4, 5, 7, 6, 8, then, okay, okay, maybe this will work? I am not entirely sure. <laughs> good music <laughs> man I'm like so I'm so stumped on this okay I think I think I know something that I can do to make this work so if it's one two three then it'll become the first number that it isn't, which would be four. Then we can do two, three, four. It'll become the first number it isn't, which is one. And the first number that hasn't been taken, not just the first number that it isn't. And then three, four, five will become two. Five, six, seven 
will become three. And then I can go ahead and take that, move that there. Six, seven, eight will become five. Eight or seven, eight, one will be six, eight, one, two will become seven. I'm starting to doubt if this is going to work. <laughs> is there's two number of n things taken k at a time without repetition refers to commutation okay so t -t 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 n is the number and k is the repetitions or r is the repetitions so that's eight and three there are 56 good is 56 divisible by eight i'm pretty sure it is but i want to make sure it is seven seven sets of eight which is how it be. <laughs> hmm. I am... Yeah, I'm not sure how to do this. I just need a way to permutate. No idea. Ah. I guess I'll just try out this to see if it works. I forgot to give them different colors. Uh... <laughs> Alright, so for five, let's just make it orange. Sure. Boom. 25, or 255, 77, 0. 77, 0. Orange. Six will be whatever the frick I decide. Uh, that is, if I can find the tab, <laughs> six will be, I don't know, let's make it nice hot pink, 255-0208, or actually no, let's make it turquoise, me, I'm number six, so it'll be 247-255, 247-255. Me! Turquoise. Okay, and then seven. That will be pink. So that's 255, zero, 175. 
174, pink, and then eight will be, I don't know, it'll be a yellow. 255, 255, zero. 255, 255, zero. Yellow. Boom. All right, let's go back over here. Reload Octolife. There we go. Now they're all different colors. Randomly fill it. Look at all those colors. And yeah, pretty much as expected, it is almost entirely states 1, 2, 3, and 4. And now it is entirely states 1, 2, 3, and 4, except for this one little orange and this one little light, this one little turquoise. Which has escaped, and so we will eternally have... Yeah, but... And then there's like this little section of hot pink right there, but like I thought, it just reverts to quad life basically, which really isn't what I want. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe I can. I, I don't know. Maybe I can cheese it somehow, but N O P Q. There's got to be some way I can get around it, but I feel like I'm not smart enough to <laughs> figure it out. N O P equals five. O P Q six three four five six seven eight like that pq p q n q n o Seven and eight. Oop. All right. Let's. I, I don't think that's really. I don't think that's really gonna fix it at all. But there's always the possibility it'll fix it. Who knows? Did I think that actually fixed it? Maybe. Possibly. I think that might have fixed it. It also might have just been that I selected a larger area than last time. But I think that might have fixed it. Octolife, here we are. <laughs> nice. All right. Okay, so if we select a smaller area, then let's see if it still ends up reverting to 1, 2, 3, and 4. No, it doesn't. Alright. I am very happy about this. No, get back here, glider. Okay, so... That means that I can do something like this. Okay, so let's do one, two, three, four, five, and let's just see what happens. Oh, it dies. That's what happens. What? Why did that die? <laughs> that should not have died. That was a glider. <laughs> did I mess that up somehow? I feel like I probably... No, I didn't. What? It died. Uh, what? 
Somehow I messed it up. Shoot. How did that mess it up? Did I- did it just not work in the first place? That can't be right. I thought I saw gliders before. That was so- what? Do they just not work with their own- with entirely separate colors? If I just make that, that works. What? What? Why didn't it- Okay, what if I set it up with just two colors? It still works with two colors. What about three colors? It fizzles out. What? Okay, I must have... I must have... So, somehow I made it so that if something has too varied of a genetic code, it dies out. So if we do that, nothing is birthed from it? This doesn't become anything? What? Why not? If we do that, then boom. But that didn't, that's not birthing anything. What did I just make? That's so strange. I wonder why it's doing that. Okay, right, sorry, got a little distracted for a second, but, um, is there a way that I can, like, I wonder what made that happen? What if I get rid of that? If I do that, and then I reload, I'm not sure what I just did, but I did something. All right then. Um, all right, so now if we do what I did before with the three differently colored things right there, it still doesn't make anything? What? What have I just done? Oh, I know why it doesn't make anything. It's because of the way that I laid this out. Okay, hold on. Let's see, so take that, put that, whoops, put that right there. That should fix it, if I remember correctly. Boop, boop, whoops. And go back to Octolife. And no? What? Did I forget to save? I didn't. So, what exactly is... Oh, it's because... Oh, okay, I think I know how to fix this. Five, six, seven, it's eight, and then that's one, two, three, four? I think that should probably fix it, if I, if I remember, if I'm interpreting it. Yeah, okay, it did. It did work. It fixed it. And if I do two, three... Four, then it creates the one. If I do five, whoops. If I do five, four, whoops. <laughs> four, six, then it creates two, or a three. But the real test is if I put a one, no. If I put a one, a five, and a three together, 
because, or er, yeah, because if we look at the code back here, one and five are grouped together in the same variable right there, which is what was causing it to break down earlier, is because if two of the things are within the same variable, then they are going to end up not working, basically. It's not going to create anything because it's going to count them as I don't I don't really know how to explain it in a concise way, but I'm if this is broken then it still doesn't work. Yep, still doesn't work. Okay. Well. <laughs> that means though uh, I know how to make it work. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Okay. So that's okay. Undo, 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 undo. Okay, so this needs to be one, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, and then this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But would that result in something that? Uh, shoot. Oh. Uh, okay. Okay, so if we reverse this, so it becomes eight, seven, six, five, three, two. Okay. Is there a way I could engineer something like this not to work? So if something, okay, so let's try this. Okay, that actually worked. Okay, so let's go. One, two, three, again, that creates four. What about two, three, four, that creates one, three, four, five, that creates two, four, five, six, that creates three, five six seven that creates four and then six seven eight creates one okay okay so so far everything has worked in some way what if i do like one three eight that creates two but i don't know if okay so let's go back to what i was doing before with the glider where each cell is a different color is it still going to fizzle out because last time it just completely died it doesn't oh okay so i might have actually just fixed it so how about we make the other sp the other spaceship, which was kind of weird shaped. Four, five, six, seven, eight, or seven, eight, the other way around. Each cell is a different color. What is going to happen? Oh? A steady population of mostly blue, but also some of mostly two, but also some three, four, and one. Huh. But again, it's one, two, and one, two, three, four primarily, and not, and it doesn't have any of the latter four which could have just had to have done with how I laid out the cells. So maybe let's try it in a reverse layout. Like, I think I messed it up. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, okay, that should be correct. Again, it results... Hmm... That is discouraging. What if I make it entirely out of colors from this? Will it still revert to um, one, two, three, four colors? No, it ends up staying within that. Four, one, two, three, four. Okay. How about this? That does revert to. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so it's highly biased towards one, two, three, and four, which is not good at all, but... Oh, well, I guess... Makes me upset. Whoa! Did you see that? What just happened there? Okay. Boom. Boom. But it didn't create a cell right there. Why didn't it create a cell right there? It had three neighbors. The three neighbors were three, six, and seven. Which three and seven are grouped up in the first set of four. And in the second set of four, three and six are grouped up, I think. Yeah. Okay, so maybe instead how to make this work would be to set this to be six, seven, eight, five. I feel like that's still going to result in some problems. Yeah, see, it still died out right there for some reason. Okay. So for some reason that this cell right here didn't create and it's it's birthers were three two and seven which that is is seven yeah seven is grouped up with two in the f first and or is three in the first and two in the second i think yeah dang it dang it dang it that's so frustrating. Maybe I can get around it by doing it like this. Four, five, six, seven, eight. If we do that, will will it work then? <laughs> okay, so that time it just went back to um. It didn't work again. Okay, let's see. Boop, boop, boop. So this one didn't create, which its parents were seven, four, and eight. Four and eight are paired up in the first, and seven and eight in the second. Dang it! Ah! There's really just no way to circumvent it, is it? Is there? Just wanna look at that. How long is this? Right, um, so it looks like there might not be a way to circumvent that. Ugh, which is just so frustrating. I feel like there must be some way, somehow, like, ah, that's so frustrating. I just wish there was a way for me to randomize it. 
If there was a way for me to randomize it, then it would all be perfectly fine. Ah. I just wish there was a way for me to randomize the output. Why isn't there a way for me to randomize the output? <laughs> Maybe there's a way that I can guarantee, that I can guarantee that it's going to fit one of the conditions. Like, maybe if I reverse, I don't know. To guarantee that it's not going to, that for one of the, the setups, two of them aren't going to be within the same variable. There must be a way for me to do that, right? Maybe I can, let's see, if I copy and paste this, and then copy and paste this, Q, R, at, whoops, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y. Running out of letters here. <laughs> okay, so R can be, I don't know. Let's make that one, one, three, two, four. Five, seven, six, eight, short. And then the next one can be the next one can be one eight. Two, seven, three, six, four, five. But four and five, those aren't already grouped up in an earlier one, are they? Doesn't look like it, I don't think. <sighs> All right. So then this one can be R S T S T U T V or wait no S T U T U R you are okay and then this one will be b w x w x y x y b Y, V, W. Sure. Honestly, kind of just shots in the dark at this point, but we'll find out. So that time it became entirely yellow. What if I go one, three, four, 
six, eight. Sure. Boom, 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 boom. All right, so that time it worked. I guess now to really check if this is going to work, I'm going to have to do combinations of each and every one. So it's one, two, three, one. Okay, there's a nice gap there. Okay, one, two, four, one. Let's turn on the grid so I'm so I'm sure I'm not placing them too close. One, two, five, one, two, six, one, two, seven, one, two, eight. And then next is uh, one, oops, one, three, four, one, three, five, one, three, six, one, three, seven, one, three, eight, then one, four, five, one, the four, six, you know what, this would be easier if I just put the, all of the, there we go, so much faster. <laughs> and three, five, 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 six, set, seven, eight. Six, six, seven, eight, one, seven, eight. So that's all of the ones that contain the number one or the the cell type one. So next we're going with the twos. <laughs> Here, maybe let's uh, select this, cut, then paste it there, or, oh, okay, boom. Okay, so now we have my brain is slowing to a crawl as I do this. <laughs> Two, three, four. So that's two, 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 two. Three, 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 three. No, three. And five, six. Seven, eight, two, 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 what a what an exciting stream. Turquoise test out all of the different combinations of three different, uh, tests out all the different combinations of sets of three of eight cells. 
Riveting. for the threes. Boom. number so funny <laughs> seven eight 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 okay then after four we got the fives boom six. Not the six is, the six, because there's only one. <laughs> Boom, that is every single combination, which means that if I go forward one step, if any of them don't get a fourth color attached to them, then I have messed up. And if the fourth colors attached to them are much more heavily balanced towards uh, the first four, I'm going to frickin' lose it. Oh, I think they all worked! <laughs> I actually did it! <laughs> oh man, that took way too long. <laughs> Alright. That was stupid. Okay. Now let's just count up the amounts of uh, which ones were which, because I want to make sure that there's generally about an even amount of each color showing up as a result of all of those. Time to get a tally going. Time to get a tally going. Alright, so... Tally says that we have... 
Uh, let's see. So let's go ahead and just label these. Um, uh, you know what? This would be easier if I just literally wrote it down on a piece of paper. I'll be right back. <laughs> time. <laughs> I'm gonna be quiet for a moment while I tally up all of the different colors. All right, I have just finished tallying them, and there are 10 of red, blue, green, and purple, and four of orange, teal, pink, and yellow. Which means that it's still heavily biased towards the first four. Ah! Going to lose my mind. <laughs> Not only that, but it seems like there aren't... Let's see, there should be seven of each, right? Yeah, okay. There should be seven of each, but instead... 
or er, 10 red, blue, green, purple, and four orange, teal, pink, yellow. This is, this is very frustrating. This is very frustrating. <laughs> uh, I can't believe this. I just want them all to, I want them all to be equal. <laughs> Why can't we all just be equal? <laughs> Ah, uh, man. Uh, I don't even know why it's biased anymore. I have lost track. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. You know what? I think for now, I'm just gonna give up. I just give up. <laughs> I, I do not have the brain power to figure out all of this, so instead, I'm just gonna fill a random area in Octolife and let it play. <sighs> What? What? What is this monstrosity? I thought I fixed it. No. What? Ah! I'm going to lose my mind. Ah. Okay. What? Why? Oh, it's because that had four neighbors, and that also had four neighbors. Wait, so is that stable in just normal life? If I go into life, that is stable. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, I guess I freaked out for nothing then. Still though, that, that was really scary. Oh, you can see blue, like, taking over. You could see blue taking over yellow for a second. That was interesting. I just had a thought. Uh, what if... I just... Okay. First, I have to figure out... My brain is so fried now. <laughs> okay. So... I'm done with Octolife for now, honestly. I just want to know what Perrier is, whatever this is. Oh, is this, um... Okay, hold on. If I draw a line like that... It does! Okay, perfect. Okay, I know what this is. This is a, um, this is a self-replicating loop machine. I think. At least I think it is. Maybe it isn't. <laughs> Maybe it's not, and I'm just losing my mind. But, uh, I think that's what it is. And if it's not, I'm going to be very sad. It doesn't look like it is. Maybe. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, going to lose my mind. I just want to know something. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be able to learn and understand things that would be that would be absolutely absolutely amazing. So this is what I was thinking it was. It's a self-replicating loop. And it just infinitely replicates out into the void. But uh, I was thinking it was similar to that, but I suppose it isn't.
Look at them go. Oh? Oh, whoa, it's creating weird, like, chaotic bits in the middle. Oh. Oh, wow, they've gotten really small. The loops have, I mean. I think they started out larger than that, didn't they? Yeah, they did. All right, so this time let's pay more attention, I guess. So looking at these loops go, look at them go, look at them loops. So you'll see that anytime the loops self intersect, they, uh, they terminate. Which, okay, so we've got this little thing down here. If we, uh, okay. Oh, that got rid of it. I wish I knew more. Oh, look, look, it's getting smaller and smaller right there. Oh, that's so strange. So the loops, the loops, brother. I need the loops. Look at them go. Look at them loops. How small do the loops end up getting? Dang. It's loop chaos. <laughs> so this is the same thing as before except with an infinite grid so it just goes out to infinity what about this one okay okay hold on so i want to figure out what each of these different cells does so, when a light blue cell makes it to the end, it removes the cap, and that cap, or it extends it by one, it seems. And a yellow turns it, it looks like. So two yellows together turn it, but it only turns it if that green is, hmm, I'm not sure. <laughs> what would, does it turn it, but only if it doesn't, yeah, it's only if it doesn't touch a gray bit, one of these bits, I think. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. That turned orange. What does orange do? Oh, orange deletes stuff. Oh. Alright. Okay. Strange. So, if we go back to this. What is green? Oh, oh. Okay, so green is a capped bit right there. Oh, that's not gonna, that's not gonna end well. Uh-oh. Oh. I am really curious as to what the rules are in this one. So, this one is... A perrier no shoot this one is a perrier loop which has the 64 different states which holy geez so what exactly is the perrier loop and why does it need so many states does it 
Does it just go? What? 3, 5, 12, 16, 23, 28, 30. What? What? Oh, that's interesting. So the Perrier loop seems to send signals through the walls, through the red walls. Which, that's interesting, but... Okay, so let's see. If I uncap that... Oh! Died. Oh. Did something. What? Okay, so that is so complex. Like, this is probably the most complex cellular automata I've ever seen with 64 different cell states. Jeez. This one gives you a seizure, but it just creates an entire world of squares. You see this? <laughs> this is Blom. <laughs> That's a... <laughs> Lavender was just thinking that uh that a cellular like an automata something that runs by itself basically that just creates an infinite world of of the same thing basically that makes her think of blom where the whole world is just a giant basically procedurally generated world where it's not actually procedurally generated, but it's just so enormous that you'll never ever reach the end. And it's so big that at one point it consumed the moon. Uh, like it expanded from the earth or from wherever it was that it literally the, the building consumed the moon. And so the entire world is just this giant ever expanding building similar to this. Man, these guys love to flash and give you a seizure. <laughs> Alright. Let's see. Oh. Oh. Look at this. This boy. This spaceship. He, uh... <laughs> he just gets bigger as he moves. Look at this. What the heck? How does that work? If I just let that go really fast... <laughs> it just gets long! Oh. Look at that. <laughs> That's pretty funny. This one's called Coral. It looks kind of like Coral as it expands. Ice Nine. Ice Nine is a reference to a book. I forget what book exactly, but basically they find like this... This orientation of ice nine that whenever it comes into like this orientation of ice so like when water freezes into ice it forms hexagonal crystals which is why snowflakes are hexagons uh and that's generally i think that's called ice h maybe i don't remember exactly but basically they find an orientation of ice called ice nine that whenever it touches water it instantly freezes it and turns it into ice nine and so there's like a character that has to kill themselves by drinking or by putting some ice nine in their mouth and it instantly turns them to ice because all of the water in them turns into ice nine. 
And so I think, I'm pretty sure that's what this is referencing. And I'm not really sure what the rules are here, but uh, let's see. So if, if we select everything, delete that. So what exactly are the rules here? So one will not survive on its own. Two next to each other will flip flop. So I'm guessing birthing from two but you don't survive from just having one next to you. What about three next to each other? Three... Oh, this is a looping. Okay. Three seems to replicate infinitely. So does... Oh, whoops. Okay, so does... Does a cell... Oh, that's cute. Thanks. Oh, that's a cool replicator. What? Oh, oh, up here are the rules up in the corner. I don't know if you can see those, but uh, the rules are birth from two, five, six, seven, and eight and survives on five, six, seven, and eight. And T2020, whatever that means. Oh, oh, it's Taurus 20 by 20. A Taurus means that it go that top connects to bottom left connects to right and then it's a 20 by 20 grid okay so ice nine is born from two or five or six or seven or eight and survives on five six seven or eight so if we go one two three four this one isn't going to be born next step yep doesn't doesn't get born this one shouldn't be born either. Nope. All right. Interesting. Not sure why they decided to call that one Ice Nine, but uh, sure. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh. Whoa. <gasps> It turns into more versions of okay. What? <laughs> no way. <laughs> it just makes Okay, okay. Does that mean that if I if I write my name or whatever, it'll turn into tons of my name? So, let's see if I scroll in and write Boom, whoops. sure how to what quote unquote font I've decided on here but oh well it's let's see so turquoise boom is it going to infinitely replicate my name because if it is that is sick <laughs> did it it actually works i did not expect that to legitimately work oh looks like there's some interference but it tr but it's trying that is so wild. Huh. 
That's so weird. What are the rules for this one? That's so interesting. If I, uh, what if I draw something? I'll draw, uh, I don't know. I'll draw the dude from, uh, from Downwell. Because he's a cool dude. I, I'm completely winging this. I don't actually remember what he looks like from memory, but I'm trying. <laughs> okay, I think he's a little taller than that. Okay, so I drew this little dude, this little sprite. It legitimately just creates more of him. That is so strange. What are what are the rules that allow this to work? <laughs> he will conquer the world. That's lame sauce. Go back. Okay. Doop. Okay, so I don't want to wait until it's full. I want to. Oh! Go back. <laughs> Look at him! The most successful little bean. He has conquered the world. <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, I don't know why that's so funny to me. Okay, so what if I create two competing sprites next to each other? What's going to happen then? Are they going to still interfere? Okay, so if I scroll in... Actually, hold on. Go back. Alright. So let's go back to little dude. Okay, so we've got little dude over here, and let's go ahead and select him. And then over here, we'll place a second version of him, except this time he'll be from an alternate universe. <laughs> uh, let's see, what? how should I change him? Let's, uh... I could just, like, turn him to the other direction. I feel like that's not as interesting, though. Maybe maybe let's give him a little bow. So we have alternate dimension. We have Dandy. This is Dandy. She has joined the stream. Uh... Alright, alternate dimension. Let's let's see what happens. So they start out replicating as normal. Oh. Oh, so they seem to just be chill. Do are they chill? I can't tell. I have to Okay. Oh, undo. They're sorta chill. They're sort of waging war here in the middle and cutting each other in half, but uh <laughs> They're fighting for dominance. <laughs> Look at them go. Successful little beans. Aw, these guys are all paired off. That's cute. Huh. That's so weird. I would have thought that, that it would have, like, interfered, and they definitely, like, would not... Like, they would have interfered and it would have caused all sorts of weird problems, but I guess not. <sighs> I am so interested to learn how that uh, works. This one's called White Whale. I don't really get why it's called that, but okay. Interesting. Spiral growth. Look at them go.
what happens when they hit each other. Oh! Whoa! <laughs> you see that? That was, that was whack right there, whatever happened right there. Okay. So, what exactly happens when they hit each other? Oh, okay, so when they touch each other, they start to glue, they kiss, like, um, like shadows, when you put two shadows really close to each other. And then those start to just fill. Is it gonna turn into a specific shape, or...? Oh! Looks like it's stabilized in this strange shape. What is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? This is an octagon? It is an octagon, actually. This weird lopsided oct octagon. What a... what a strange strange thing going on right here. Hello to whoever just said hi to me. Thank you for that sweet comment. <laughs> what happens if I just... Oh, it just fills right in. What a strange rep... What a strange set of rules this one is. Let's see, the rules for this one are birth at 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8, and survive at 1, 5, 6, 7, 8. Huh. And it... Interesting. Persian rugs! Let's see some Persian rugs! Whoops, I accidentally clicked the wrong button. Let's see some Persian rugs! All right, look at that go. Interesting. It just creates a Persian rug-like design. What happens if I interfere with it? Draw... Oh, whoops. I guess I just accidentally drew a line through it, but draw like that. Oh, look at it go. Man. That is trippy. Alright, so if I delete all of that, and I just start with a single bu Oh, that doesn't survive. What about two? Oh! Whoop. Look at it go! It's in, it's in a, uh... It's a Persian rug, but this time it's, um... Shoot, what's the word? Uh, oh, this program is, a uh, Golly, which is used for creating cellular automata and playing around with them. Uh, I isometric. That's what it's called. It's a Persian rug, but an isometric view. <laughs> All right. Uh, and cellular automata are like a huge, a huge thing for me. I love cellular automata. Oh, creating another an is another isometric rug. Okay, so what if I, uh, what if I, I don't know, start with something like this. So that creates another one of the more traditional Persian rugs. Is that because, um, that's the next step of this? It is! Oh, okay. What if I do that? Oh. All right, let's see. So, is this... Okay, this is a strange... Okay, so this is... The rules for this one are birth at two with corners, something else, something else, and three... Uh, I don't I don't know no the notation well enough. 
Let's see. But looks like they're just shooting off shooting off guns and stuff. <laughs> they're shooting off the same they're shooting off the same spaceship, but uh, this side is shooting them off much faster than the other. Interesting. Infinite binary ruler generator. Oh? Oh. It just generates a a ruler. Wait. What's this doing up here? <laughs> Alright then. Intergalactic cruise ship factory. Ah. Oh. oh, that's so cool. It actually does kind of look like like almost like a, a a a giant cruise ship from above. That's so cool. Man, these are such cool cellular automata. I love cellular automata so much. Oh. Oh, is it a... it's a space filler, supposedly, so does it just keep going? Huh. Oh, whoa! Whoa, that was really interesting! I did not expect that! What the heck happened there? Okay, so let's... oh, whoops. Ah, shoot. <laughs> So I want to follow it and figure out what exactly happens to trigger that. Because this just, this looks like it should repeat forever right here. Like, I'm not really sure why that didn't. Oh, it's because of this back here, isn't it? This eventually catches up to it. And then boom, and then that. Looks like it should just sit there. Oh, but this is catching up again. So it looks like when that hits it, all of a sudden it flips back on itself and starts, well, as the title says, fill, filling space. That's so weird and interesting. Alright, what about this? This is called Night Ship. P-42 Night Ship. Oh! Oh, it's just a... It's just a spaceship, but it's very strange, because it has three segmented parts to it. Pond Puffer Spaceship. So what exactly is this? Oh! It's literally just a spaceship that... Huh. These are... There are so many cool spaceships! Ah, cool! What's this one? Uh, Rotating Oscillator Puffer. Interesting. Oh, it just creates a nice long tail of a, a nice long rotating tail that just waves up and down. <laughs> That's really cool and kind of cute. I want like a bunch of these all next to each other to make a, a, a big jellyfish. Hold on. Uh, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and then boop. And then V, and boop, and then V, and boop, and then V, and boop. That might not work, but I'll try. It worked! 
Ah, oh, look at it. Look at it go. Nice little jellyfish with wiggly wavy arms. That's so cool. What's this? This is the RR-14 gun. Oh? It just shoots these little dudes off in all four directions. Huh. Serpinski Builder! Yes! Build me a Sper Serpinski Triangle! Oh, look at that Serpinski triangle, baby. It's a double Serpinski. I am very satisfied. Look at that Serpinski triangle. That thing is massive. Alright, hold on. I'm going to try and stop it right when it reaches. Okay. I got this, I got this, I got this. And let's slow it down. And stop, maybe? Okay, I think, I think that's... Yeah, okay. Boom! Double Serpinski, baby! Ah, cool. This is a unit fraction orthogonal spaceship. Unit fraction orthogonal spaceships. Oh. Oh, this one has a whole bunch of different states. Does it, is it just building a curve? It looks like it's just building a curve, which that's really cool, actually. Yeah, it looks like it's just making a, uh, what's it called? Um, t -t 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 a, not quite a, um, not quite, Ugh, crap, I can't remember what it's called. Oh, it's... Spaceships and Rakes? That's what this one is called. Oh, wow, that is a really slow spaceship right here. And these guys just shoot off an infinite line. <gasps> Ed Replicator! Yes! Ed Replicator. See this? This right here? This is Ed. And he will now grow. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's so good. I love, I love the Ed Replicator. <laughs> it just makes lots of copies of Ed. Uh, it's so good. Ed! <laughs> the Ed Replicator! Uh, who, who made this and how does it work? I mean, it probably works the same way as the Replicator from before. But that's so <laughs> funny to me. Look at him. Look at this boy. Look at this dude. <laughs> he will now conquer the universe. Oh, look at him go. I love it. I love it so much. The Ed Replicator is my favorite. Ah, oh, look at him! <laughs> it's a bunch of him and there and a bunch of negative ends. That's so funny. Uh, <laughs> Ed he is taken over. <laughs> that is so funny. 
<laughs> Who made this? And how? And why? <laughs> uh, Ed. Ed will continue to take over the universe. <laughs> Ah, uh, that is so good. Just look at him go. Look at Ed. He is the most successful. <laughs> the most successful being. Ed is an analogy for humans in the future when we spread out to other stars. <laughs> also, my computer is struggling to run this many cells at once. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, look at all the Eds. They get kind of more garbled in the middle, but around the edges, around the corners, he looks more like Ed. That's so funny. Oh, that's so funny. I wonder who Ed actually is. Like, I wonder who this picture is of. I want to meet Ed. I want to see how his conquest to take over the entire universe is going. <laughs> ah, that's so good. Okay. This is called Factorize. Oh, what just happened there? Oh, that's so cool! So this line down here is the factors of the number of squares. That is really cool. Oh, so, okay, so let me test this out. Uh, so right here is the starter. So let's go at... How many is this? Uh, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I think 17 is a prime number, so let's see. Oh, let's see. So this is uh, 1 and 2. Oh, oh, this doesn't count it. So technically this is 16. So that's 1, 2, 4... 8 and 16. But if we do 17, it should. Yeah. That's so interesting. I never would have thought that you would be able to create something that tells you the factors of numbers like this. Like that's such a that's such an interesting idea and I wonder who made it and how and why all right i just want to create like the biggest freaking number that i want to see the factors of all right that's a that's a pretty big number let's let's find out the factors oh whoops uh so that Ooh. okay i think that's correct Dang. Uh, I think I broke it. Alright, we'll try this again. <laughs> Does it only work for, like, a certain limit? Like, is there a limit to the size of number that it can factorize? Maybe... Possibly. Did I break it? How did I break it? What? Okay. What? Oh, it's because I was drawing the wrong color. Right. Sometimes you just are dumb. Okay, so let's do it to right there. 
boom. Okay. This is gonna be one heck of a freaking thing that it is making. Oh jeez. Look at it go! I wonder what the factors are gonna be. If I just randomly picked a prime number by chance... No way! No! I actually randomly picked a prime number. Oh no, I didn't. Okay, there are two, two factors down there. And the factors are, let's see, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and... 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 53, and 13. So what is 53 times 13? 53 times 13, 689, huh. What if I do that? <laughs> Is that gonna be a prime number? I'm like determined to get a prime number now. Oh, oh, hey, it's prime. So that's two above whatever the number I said was 289, I think. Yeah, so that's six or er, 689. So this is 691 is prime. Wow. That is so cool. I never would have thought that you'd be able to create something that could... I, I mean, I guess... I guess it sounds feasible when I say it out loud, but like... Consciously, I never would have thought to make something like that. What's this? Is this like a gas simulator? I think it's a gas simulator. Because if we start over, there's like that one really high concentration section that just gradually spreads out with those waves. Interesting. So it looks like what they did is they just took... It went like this. And randomized it. Oh. Maybe not fully randomized it because there are these, whatever these are. What are those? Interesting. So we can see here. Okay, so. Oh, so the lit up tiles, these yellow tiles are all storing whatever arrow hit them. So if I, for example, put that right there. Oh, that's so interesting. Hmm. 
Interesting. And then, so this is like a really high density area right here because it has four different particles stored right there. And if I go forward one, they all start to disperse. really interesting. I never would have thought to simulate like gases like that. So what are the red and green tiles? Oh, the red just absorbs the arrows. Oh, and green just infinitely produces arrows. Okay. Wait, so that means if I leave that there, it'll eventually all just become the four-way cross arrows, right? It looks like it might eventually... <laughs> Or maybe never. Hmm. So, does that mean I can do something like um, that? That? It's just a blaster. Is it eventually going to fill up? It looks like it's really hard to make it like actually just completely full of four cross arrows. Oh, and then boom, I just put a, a single outlet right there. <laughs> That's so interesting. And then if I, like, put that right there. Hmm. That's such an interesting way of... Ah, oh, that's so cool. Whoops. these particles which just seem to be bouncing around down there and when you turn it to just the colors it really shows like how the density is changing you can see it getting more and more dense as the lights get higher and higher gradually filling up with air pressure and then down here. Suddenly it all... That is really cool. You can just... Ah. Man. Man, I love cellular automata. They're so cool. Okay. But what if I, whoops, what if I literally just fill this entire box with the highest pressure air? Wait, what happens if I just put that there? Oh, there's something trapped right there now. So what if I do that? 
right anyway uh, and and then if I just remove one little wall oh whoops that's not what I meant to do boop and I can clear out all of these spots too just remove one little bit of wall and Look at it go. <laughs> Gradually, it's all going to disperse out of there and be consumed by this red wall. Is so cool. Huh. It oscillates. What if I does it oscillate then? There's a bit right there where it's rotated 90 degrees. Interesting. So this is HPP rule set. Let's open that up. These are the different icons. characters per pixel. Alright, I want to try something with this. Uh, I want to add in... Uh, okay, so that shows for states 16 to 33. Uh, you know what, I'll do it later. I've been streaming for four hours now, and, uh... <sighs> and so I am going to take a break, <laughs> and by take a break, I mean I'm going to stop streaming for now. Uh, so let's start this where I started it, or er, let's stop this where I started it. Let's start this where I started it. Okay. Where I started it is with Hex Life. 
right here. Let's see, four, five, boop, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, boom. This is not entirely correct, I don't think. No, it is. I'm just wrong. As usual. <laughs> that was a joke. I was joking. <laughs> Boop. Right here, with this nice target drawn in hexagons. That's where I started it. Ugh. <sighs> Thank you all for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end of this. Like, seriously, that's a really long time. Uh, I hope you all have a great night, morning, day, whatever time it is for you. And hopefully uh, one of us at Palette will see you around. Uh, bye.